different different issues and concerns. I'm finding so many so many different different mentality today. It seems hard. It seems it seems challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. So, so. Hello, my name is Addison Connect, and I'm a Philadelphia School District public school teacher. I deal with foster care youth on a daily basis, and it affects not only my job, but my family. Statistics show that Pennsylvania State of Welfare's 2017 report that 8,020 children were entered into foster care in 2016. It shows that the number of children entered into foster care has risen by 32% since 2012. The abuse report in 2016 also shows that 5,567 cases of child abuse were taken. Out of those 5,000 cases, 847 were substantiated. That means that 55% of the children in foster care families were in those reports. The statistics get worse when 247 were repeated cases. It also shows that 503 of them were female and 344 were male. Alarmingly, 995 cases were screened out by insufficient information, which leaves no information about why they were taken out. And of those 2,272 people that applied to the foster care center, they were declined because they were perpetuated and substantiated perpetrators. What people need to realize is that these numbers are not just numbers, they are children. These statistics are real and they are reality that these children go through. They wake up to them, they go to school with them, and they come back to those same situations. An article in the Education Stability for Youth in Foster Care states that less than one third of those students that change one time in high school do not graduate. And that is detrimental because our graduation rate in Philadelphia is 67%. What I have to say is that in Philadelphia, there are 32.677 Pennsylvania foster care youth in the population. And that accurate means that next year, 10,567 of them will be in here. We're going to Hagen's 5A to make Philly great. I'm going to talk about, uh, I was going to talk about another resolution, but we're going to talk about the resolution authorizing the establishment of a special committee on Child separation in Philadelphia is investigating child separation. In Philadelphia, the child welfare system and the government has been able to ensure compliance with state child protective services, law to protect children, and due process rights to families and prevent the unnecessary breakup of families. Councilman O. Councilman O, thank you, Councilman O. Thank you. Thank, thank you, uh, Councilwoman Dad, for yes. trying to go into this. Yes. But, you know, you're looking out for black people. Yes. You're looking out for black people, and we thank you, the African American community, yes. thank yes. you for looking yes. out for black people. Yes. Nobody else yes. is looking out for that. Yes. Yes. Look at you guys. And this is really indicative of this campaign season, something that I've noticed, is these commercials. What city are these commercials being produced in? What, what, I mean, you guys, I mean, look, I'm telling you, you're very nice, you, you look nice and everything like that, but you're faking the people out. Yes! You're, 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 you have these commercials with African-Americans smiling, really? What is there to smile about when every other block there's potholes? What is there to smile about when six out of ten children in Philadelphia can't read, write, or do math on the high school level? Yo, you guys need to be ashamed of buying the people. I got three minutes, right? No, we got two minutes. So why do I have two minutes? But what I'm saying is this. You're lying to the people. Thank you, girl. Please call. Read the title of 190 346A. A resolution authorizing the establishment of a special committee on child separation in Philadelphia to investigate child separation in Philadelphia's Child Welfare System and develop recommendations to ensure compliance with state child protective services law to, prohib to protect children and due process rights of families and prevent the unnecessary breakup of families. Chair recognizes Councilman Reed. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the issue of child separation is obviously a serious issue. I think we all would agree on that. And it's certainly something that should be looked at in a, in a uh, very intense manner. Uh, I would argue respectfully this is not the right approach that is proposed by this resolution to set up a special committee. Uh, we already have two standing committees that could address this, this issue. And I think most importantly, we have a task force that was set up, I believe, in last and to uh, that is dealing with all with the various issues of DAS, including this, and they include the uh, all important entities, including DHS, including the school district, and uh, that would seem to be at least one of those places would seem to be the appropriate place to deal with the issue with this particular issue. Um, that I understand that task force again has met at least a, a dozen times. I think we need to show a consistent. Uh, approach to this issue. We already have, uh, it's already being looked into, to have another uh, uh, special committee set up and have them crisscrossing into each other, I, I think is, is the wrong approach. I think it sends the wrong message to all of those who are concerned, including the state, who will be looking at what, at what we're doing. So while I'm going to, while I would argue that we do not approve this resolution, I want to be clear, we are not rejecting the issue of child separation. We are rejecting this particular method of addressing it. And I think we all want to both, 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 we had an opportunity for public comment, and we're going to have the vote. We're going to have information from the members. Council, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, again, I want to repeat, we are not rejecting this issue of child separation. We all agree it's an important issue. But I think we should reject this particular approach and deal with the with the entities and the um, committees that are already set forth and all work together to try to, to address, again, this very important issue. So I would ask members to vote no on this resolution. Thank you very much. Uh, vote, 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 vote. Not going to do that, all right?
The point of information is, in many ways, I'm going to punctuate um, what Councilman Bill Greenlee has already articulated. To be sure, we have the Committee on Health and Human Services, which is one place where we can go for parents and those who care about the life chances of our children to have a voice, to have a say, and oftentimes their way. We also have the Committee on Children and Youth, where parents and those of us who care about our children get a chance to have their say and many times get their way. I learned in doing some homework this morning that we also have a task force that has been uh, convened uh, under the leadership of Councilwoman Gilm and Councilwoman Kenyatta Johnson. So for me, it would be very, 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 very useful to get an update on where they are attacking every single issue that's articulated in this resolution needs to be examined, needs to be looked at with a laser beam. The point of information I'm asking is, of these issues introduced in this resolution, are they being captured in the task force that is currently already convened by Councilwoman Gill and no. Councilwoman, Councilwoman Kenyatta Dawson? That's the point of information I need. Secondly, are we slicing hairs here? Are we slicing hairs? Are we able to achieve everything this resolution requires? And yes, we do need to look at the issue. Are we able to achieve everything in the resolution by way of the task force that has been in place for X number of months? So it would be very, very helpful for me to hear an update on the task force at this hour prior to calling on the vote. I see my first two years. Um, two years, I see my first two years. Folks, folks, come on. Did you request? Come on. So, who is the task force was convened? Who is going to be the person that's going to respond? My, my limited understanding is this. Chair recognizes. Hey, folks, folks, seriously. You really need to go and be quiet, please, so we can conduct the business. Chair recognizes the council again. Thank you very much, Council President. Um, first of all, I want to um, absolutely acknowledge uh, the people who are in this room, many of whom have pushed us to go this far. Um, in June, this council uh, this council uh, convened and established a task force um, to take a look at the issue of youth in uh, residential treatment facilities. Obviously, many of them are separated from their families, but the issue has gone quite broad as well. We're looking at issues of separation but more importantly, also issues of what we can, what we need to do to bring families back to health and healing. Um, since we uh, established the task force, the task force started meeting. Um, we have multiple members of the task force. They include the school district of Philadelphia, the district attorney's office, um, uh, the CBH, DBH, uh, city agencies, um, council member offices and um, uh, our advocates, the Defenders Association, um, uh, Education Law Center, and others who have, uh, Juvenile Law Center, uh, who are taking a serious look at reducing on the front end and also ensuring the safety of young people in these uh, treatment facilities. Um, we, have, we started meeting in November. We've met over 14 times, including a town hall that brought out 150 families. Um, showing us how we both need to do better and how we can do better. Um, this, this, this is... This, there are parents who are represented on the task force as well as young people. Um, and we will commit to doing, we have committed already to doing another town hall on this very issue for which we will invite people, including members of the task force, to be available. The, um, uh, we are moving towards recommendations that will see a significant reduction um, around youth uh, in these facilities. Um, they include, uh, they, we expect to have those recommendations hopefully as early as September, um, but we would like to see that move towards fruition and invite uh, 
you know, members of the those who are interested in the special committee to join us on the task force and be part of that solution that we are creating, the recommendations that we have. Um, I understand the pain that a lot of people in this room are facing. We also have a big systemic problem and we need all people at the table to try and get this under control. I'm committed to it. Um, I'm in my first term and we've already seen things Next turn. Um, and you know, for for those of us uh, who are on council, we are taking this issue very seriously um, and certainly invite um, other council members to be part of that process. Vote her out! Vote her out! I'm leaving, I'm leaving! It seems challenging, I don't say hard, because the only thing hard is we can't creep that we walk.